What do hero shooters, MOBAs, and battle royales all have in common? I bet you said that they were oversaturated. Well, I disagree, because personally, I believe that all of these genres are ripe for innovation. The problem is that there is a huge lack of innovation being put forth by the companies pumping these out. It's really hard to do Fortnite better than Fortnite, or Overwatch better than Overwatch. Even if you have a morsel of common sense and know these games are awful, they still have loyal fan bases. You're not gonna steal set audience when you're offering something that doesn't do anything different, let alone better. That's why I have high hopes for Super Vibe. At first glance, Super Vibe looks like a twin stick shooter, mixed with a MOBA, fused with a battle royale, with a healthy helping of hero shooter on top. Just by that sentence alone, you know it's going to be wholly unique from any of the big titles within said genres. Last week Super Vibe's open beta launched and my fat ass is here to give you my impressions on it. Careful. Get over here, little girl. Big man wants that Bogusi. Honestly, like, Myth looks kind of dateable to me. I mean, I don't know how I feel about the regular flesh tone skin and the jello hair. Now, if her skin was also jello, yes. I feel like I can sit here and say, would I like the jelly or not? And just, just try. The, is it like a sea anemone where like it like poison stings you when it touches you? I mean, I guess I'll find out. Yeah, 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 yeah. This was wondering. Like, is she like a jellyfish? Players, players, careful. Oh, okay, well, I'm stuck on the tree and stuck on people. Well, we uh, fuck off, cat. Uh, if if possible, kill the big dude. Cool, we still got yeah, XP. I got him. There's a street back here. Yep, I see it. She's dead. Get cool. Oh, Free XP. Free XP. Hello, Bingo. We see you, baby. Spike, loser. You know what's crazy to me is that jellyfish look like the most unharmful creatures ever, but they like just fucking kill you. They don't even think, they just kill. Jellyfish are fascinating to me. There's a jellyfish called the Man of War. Pretty cool name. If you That's ask. not a jellyfish. It's not a jellyfish? The Man of War isn't a jellyfish? Nah. Bullshit. Yeah. Alexa, is the Man of War a jellyfish? According to an Alexa Answers contributor, the Portuguese man of war, while it superficially resembles a jellyfish, is in fact a siphonophore. What the f Oh, the wall into the punch potatoes! <laughs> <laughs> this is why. Oh, shit. Oh, get out of there if you can. Now he. Punched. Oh my, oh my god. god. <laughs> I'll jump pad? Yeah, I don't have a jump pad though. Plays with death. Ah! Uh, we can beat these guys. These, they suck. We would be dead by now if they were any good. And that guy overplayed his hand right there. He does. Got one. Shit, he's kind of hitting me. I'm zooming to you. There we go. Not bad. Uh, well, we suck though. Yeah, we do. We do. We're good. We got these feel good, like easy wins. Shrank's gonna die there, first. There is a person coming up on top. Oh. Well, one's dead. There, Firefox is on us. Yep. Give me a moment. Pressure. Throw in uh, slowers. I need ghost now. Down. He's my problem. There we go. Ah, there we go. There's three. It's only ghosts. Got him. Trying to stick over. Let's go. 
<laughs> we crush his pee pee. Wow. It's a it's a colony. It's a fucking colony of animals that work together. That that's crazy. That's crazy. So you're telling me the crazy. man of war is a bunch they of small crazy. organisms. And they're organized better than humans. Well, they're communists. They're fucking very commie. <laughs> yeah, they are. They would be very communist. They they are, cool dude, animal. you renamed Porchy's Man War to Scotty Fish. Yeah. Oh, nuke. oh, they dropped the nuke. They dropped the nuke. Oh, nuke. Twice. That's fine. We have a limited glider. That'll get us out. That would have been the time to fucking pull. Oh, Sam. Sam, Sam. fall back, fall back, fall back. Shit, I got stunned. That's actually really not good because that was my ult. Fuck. Yeah. Bang, bang. I got 22 seconds on my ult. Ooh. Ooh, they're so less, they're so less overplayed. Yeah. Good, good. The character designs of Super Vibe can kind of feel generic, you know, now that everything looks like Pixar stuff, but they do eventually start to kind of grow on you. There's Ghost, who's a warlock gunman that uses a magic machine gun that's pretty metal. Also, he looks like Nathan Explosion from Death Clock. Then we got this furry over here named Aluna. She uses a uh, lunar based magic to heal people. She's pretty based. On the other end of the spectrum, you got this retarded fox fur. Obviously, the cast is a lot bigger. I mean, we got fat guy with a Gatling gun. British Elsa. This guy no one chooses. Goth mommy biker chick. That twink you knew from high school. And, uh and arms. The art style of this game, it's reminiscent of games like Warcraft 3, and that's because the studio behind Super Vibe is populated by ex-Blizzard devs, as well as Riot devs, I guess. <laughs> I've got... 15 hours of game time in Super Vibe, and I'd like to think that I've got at least the basics down. Players drop onto a map and are tasked with eliminating the opposing teams in a match to the death. Unlike traditional battle royales or hero shooters, Super Vibe has actual player progression mid-match. It's closer to a MOBA in this regard rather than the RNG-based Mad Dash that battle royales are notorious for. The skill building, on the other hand, differentiates itself from the relatively static experience that hero shooters are. You can level up your character's abilities and equipment by eliminating creeps strewn across the map. Not only that, but just like in battle royales, players can find and utilize consumables and equipable abilities. There are plenty of avenues players can use to acquire these. For instance, Valves have a crap ton of items in them, Quest Givers gives you quests, and completing those quests give you more shit. Boss Monsters drop rare shit. And the stores where you can buy shit. It always feels like there's something to do in a match, rather than just find other players and kill them. This isn't really all that new. Fortnite and Apex both added more stuff to do mid-match in later seasons, but to me they mostly came off as tacked on bullshit rather than well thought out features. I might be a bit biased here because I hate Fortnite and Apex Legends, surprisingly for a very similar reason. Uh, you can feel free to call out my bullshit in the uh, comments below, I guess. Also, uh, if you hate Fortnite and Apex, 
should totally give me a subscription, baby. My birthday is in three months. In Super Vibe, these additions don't feel unnecessary. These side activities are integral to match progression. Killing mobs gives experience and resources to upgrade, and players will need to stay on top of leveling if they have any hope of winning the match. Each character has a kit with one passive ability and four active abilities. Active abilities can be upgraded after every level. These are linear upgrades. On the other hand are the equipment slots. Players start the match choosing from three archetypes. Attack, Hybrid, and Tank. Equipment boils down to a weapon, helm, and boots slot. The only thing the archetype affects is how many weapon or helm slots the player has at the beginning of the match. Why are you wearing three beanies? You're really gonna ask me that when Chris Chan is having a child? Yeah, that's right. In Super Vibe, you can wear two helmets at once. Does it make sense? No. But does it need to make sense? Also no, because the absurdism of it, the absurdism of this reality, is what makes life worth living. Equipment is typically leveled up by picking up armor shards from dropped mobs or players. As the armor levels up, more specialized options become available. These affect your stats and ultimately will determine your late game builds. Equipable abilities further add on to the customization of the player's character, though this is more down to RNG of the match, but it is still another way to customize your guy. It also adds more of a randomness factor that makes these games infinitely replayable. There are so many other small things about this game that I'm missing out on telling you guys, like how shooting an enemy while they're gliding over a pit insta-kills them, or the day-night cycle affecting the line of sight, or the different storms actively affecting each match. There is a lot going on in this game. One of the arguably more decisive things about Super Vive is its top-down perspective, which might be off-putting, for some potential players, and to be frank, it kind of is for me. I'm not a big fan of twin stick shooters for a multitude of reasons. Yeah, they won't notice I read that off the script. The main reasons being a lack of verticality, as well as visceral vibe to close range combat. In that regard, Super Vibe is surprisingly vertical and has a range of movement options that actually make the gameplay feel fast and fluid, especially in late game. Dashes have a fast enough cooldown to not feel like I'm waiting a week to dodge, whilst not being spammable to the point of irritation. Players also have access to Breath of the Wild styled gliders to further increase movement tech. It's actually pretty impressive for a game in this style. I can't say anything about the melee feeling functionally unique for a twin stick shooter, so I'll say the two melee characters, they felt pretty typical for the genre. Super Vive is currently in its open beta. It's basically in early access, since there doesn't seem to be an end date. Despite being incomplete, the game runs pretty well and is fairly polished. I can't really think of any glaring issues. The only problems I can think of is maybe the invite system, but even then it's not that bad. I guess if I could complain about something, it would have to be that there's a cash shop available in a beta, but at least it's not pay to win. If I have to be mad about something, uh, that's definitely it. At the end of the day, Super Vive is a breath of fresh air for three genres that have been desperately lacking innovation for years. It's a unique fusion that takes some core components from MOBAs, hero shooters, and battle royale, and turns them into something really fun and kind of actually new. The performance is superb considering it is a beta. The biggest question I have is, can it compete with its contemporaries? Or will it fall off in a month or two? Long story short, Super Vibe is a game that feels like it was designed by Blizzard before Blizzard was only known for stealing breast milk from babies and ruining Overwatch. If that doesn't sell it to you, I don't know what will. It's free. Alright, this video is lasting too long. I'm out of here.